Dave Smith here. So this is another video in the doing wet plate series and what we're going to do today is clean the plates that we cut and filed in the last video. We're going to clean them and we're going to sub them uh, with, alum, uh, uh, with albumen and I'm going to show you the making of the albumen in this video as well and the subbing and once they're subbed they're um, they're kind of protected, so they're ready to receive uh, collodion when we're ready to shoot some more plates. So, cleaning and subbing in uh, this video. Let's get to it. Okay, here we are. So I'm going to do this uh, eight plates at a time, and I'm going to do all stages to eight plates and I'm going to do all stages to the next eight plates so don't worry I'm going to, <laughs> not going to be making you watch uh, every single one I've forgotten something here we go little dribble of ethanol right so first thing I do on uh, both sides is I just give them a spray with glass and glass and window cleaner which I've got from the local supermarket And I will do this on both sides. <coughs> now you've seen the plates that we've made uh, previously. And those plates were cleaned in exactly this way. Now, <coughs> excuse me, there's lots and lots of uh, sort of conflicting advice around on everything to do with uh, wet plate and you just kind of check it all out see what's going to work for you I thought I'd crack that then that would be bad uh, decide what's okay for you and give it a will one of the things that you get a lot of uh, different information on is cleaning glass and some people will tell you uh, oh, all kinds of things but one of the things that I came across is to as a sort of final step is to pour uh, very very hot boiling water onto your plates and that will because it's very very hot it will dry uh, almost immediately now that may well be true. It's not a step that I bother with. And <clears throat> in not bothering with that step, uh, I've had no uh, difficulties with my plates, particularly now that I sub them with uh, albumen. And that, I think, is the key, or certainly one of the keys, to making sure that your collodion ultimately is going to adhere to your plate. <coughs> Get it subbed with albumen. Okay, so uh, nearly done and then we'll do the other side of all these plates and then I will show you my second stage, my second stage is my last stage before I go into the album and step. Okay, now a lot of what you see and hear and read about wet plate uh, comes from practitioners who revived this process in the sort of mid to late 20th century and many of those practitioners <coughs> were following the processes laid out by the uh, by the early uh, pioneers of wet plate and in particular the modern day practitioners came to wet plate through 
uh, Civil War reenactment. <coughs> and because they came to it, <coughs> excuse me, because they came to it through Civil War reenactments, they were looking for ways and means to make it uh, and keep it authentic. And you therefore get quite a lot of uh, information and advice, which is really kind of out of date. Uh, you know, and we can bring uh, wet plates somewhat into the 21st century, I guess, uh, up to a degree. And that's kind of um, where you'll see I'm at. Uh, I like the idea <coughs> of producing uh, wet plate images for many reasons. One is that if <coughs> film does eventually die, uh, I suspect that that's unlikely myself, but if it were, if it were to, then uh, many of these uh, uh, chemicals and um, resources uh, aren't really tied to the photographic industry so they will still be available and you will still be able to shoot non-digital images which I like the idea of not anti-digital by any means uh, but I do like the idea of being able to continue in analog photography uh, should these various companies Die a death. Uh, as I say, I think it's unlikely. I think people are uh, coming through the so-called digital revolution, and analog and film are seeing a pretty good resurgence. Okay, so there's the initial clean on uh, both sides. Now what I do, and I'm just going to make you suffer through one of these, but I'm going to do all eight, and then we'll come back for the subbing. This is calcium carbonate, uh, otherwise uh, often referred to as uh, whiting, uh, particularly if you're a printmaker, uh, by which I mean presses, then you'll come across the idea of whiting. So uh, again, uh, this is something where people will have different approaches. What I do is just a little dab of whiting uh, in the centre. Uh, this is ethanol, it's uh, bioethanol for uh, fires, put a little dribble of that so I can make a paste and what I'm going to do with this is just wipe all over. Now, everybody will tell you, pay particular attention to the corners and I'm going to tell you exactly the same. You want to get a good scrubbing all over the surface of the plate. You only need to do this on one side and you're listening for that squeakiness then you've got enough pressure to get right in but get those corners get those edges and there we go <coughs> just going to give that a little polish over Take any residue off the edges. And another thing you will hear is the so-called breath test. You can breathe on it and it should clear um, uniformly. Uh, I don't bother with that.
And there we go. So that's our first plate nicely cleaned. Now I'm going to do seven more and then we will come back and we'll uh, sub them together. Okay. Okay, so here we are in my kitchen now. We're going to make our albumin for the subbing. The ingredients are pretty benign. A um, bit crowded with the lights and the camera in here. My kitchen was not designed for uh, filming. It was designed for cooking. Um, but anyway, here we are. So, pretty benign uh, ingredients. We're going to use an egg. We're going to use some distilled water and a tiny, tiny little bit of ammonia. The ammonia is just to uh, act as a preservative so your uh, egg layer, abdomen layer, doesn't get attacked by stuff. Now, we have to do quite a bit of mixing here and I'm gonna keep you with me throughout that. And I'm just gonna see if I can find Where's a mug? Just somewhere to put the yolk because we do not want the yolk in our albumin because yolk is not albumin. Got my mixer, everything set, ready to go. Got my timer. Let's make us some albumin. So distilled water. Just gonna. I just got this ammonia from hmm, from uh, the hardware store home base I think because I'm in the UK uh, oh, I smell it already oh, just gonna draw up a little bit in this dropper and I'm literally just gonna put just a few drops in put that back shouldn't really do that but you know store-bought ammonia right so <coughs> I really smell that ammonia. My God, it's strong. So right, so now we're going to separate an egg. I just use these cheap eggs, again, from the supermarket. Let's see if we can uh, do this without dropping the yolk in there. There we go, that's gonna do us, I think. I'm gonna pop the yolk in there, and I'll possibly use that in an omelette later. Okay. Now, I'm going to plug in my mixer. I'm gonna turn on my timer and we are going to mix this for five minutes because we do want to get a good mix. So I imagine that's quite loud now so bear with me. Okay, so we are finished with the mixing. Okay, so mixing finished. Uh, got a good five minutes of mixing. And now what I'm gonna do is filter this with uh, just an ordinary coffee filter. This one's stained for some reason. I do not know why. Let's see how that works out. Okay, so I'm gonna filter uh, all of that. <clears throat> so that's obviously gonna take a couple of minutes, as you can see. Uh, I will rinse things down. 
then we'll come back and we will sub this plate. Well, actually, we'll sub eight of them. <laughs> okay, see how it works out. Okay, so here we are back again, and we are going to finally sub these plates. Um, this is not a swift operation, let me tell you. I switched from coffee filters to cotton pads because the coffee filters were taking so long. And I just noticed there are some tiny, tiny uh, little bubbles in here. So I'm just going to uh, wipe around just to collect up those little bubbles so they don't spoil our plates. And just gently wipe them off the surface like so. Uh, a couple more over here. And we can just lift them out with a piece of paper towel. I think we're done there. Right. Just put that in the bin. Right. So let's get some albumin on these plates. Now I've got my special plate dusting brush. Some people call this a makeup brush, uh, but you'd have to be using it for makeup for that. And this is what I use it for. Okay, I think we are about ready. So I'm going to do this in exactly the same way as we would when we are pouring collodion. We don't need to be quite so careful. I've got some on the back of there, but uh, that will be okay. I'll wipe it off in a moment. Let's get me a piece of this. Just give that back side a wipe. Okay. There we go. That's the first of our plates subbed. Let's carry on, put those there to dry. Plate number two. I think I'm going to need a little bit more on the pour. I see some marks on there. I'm just going to make sure that they are on the back. Before we go any further. Okay. Dusting and then we will do this one. Okay, that's a horrible pour, really poor. And that should be absolutely fine. Right, let's get that one on there. Try and do a better job with the Next one, this is number th three. Remember we've got eight to do. Okay, let's try 
try again. Probably no better. <coughs> Number five. Okay, so I'm conscious that you probably don't want to watch every single one of these. Uh, so I'm going to carry on and finish them off. And then these, will, these eight will be ready. And I have eight more to do before we start shooting again. And remember, we're going to uh, I'm going to shoot that uh, Ostermans again. Okay, so I hope this little video on cleaning and subbing the plates has been of some interest and next time we're back to shooting to try out that Ostermans uh, it didn't work very well for us last time thanks very much for watching bye for now And one more. 